Shalom, all praises, blessings, glories, and honors to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash. Double honors to my elder apostles and bishop elders of Great Millstone who have taught me this truth as well of men of like mind. Shalom wa chasad, which means peace and mercy to the elect of the nation of Israel, whom are you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, and Israelite foreigners of the sea land of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whom are scattered here in America, which is Babylon the Great, and abroad. But to you I say Shalom, and Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Rataza, this lesson is edifying and informative. Joel chapter 3, verse 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. In the news from the Sputnik. What is the CFE treaty and why has Russia renounced it? The word renounced. It's from the word renounce, which means to give up, refuse, or resign usually by formal declaration. And so Russia has formally declared their resignation or refusal from the CFE Treaty, published today. The past five years have seen an acceleration in the breakdown of the post-Cold War order, but a number of security agreements revoked i.e. the New START Treaty, among various others. And now, the CFE Treaty has been added to that list, and NATO continuing its push toward Russia's borders. The Conventional Armed Forces in Europe CFE Treaty is the latest agreement on the chopping block. What is it? And why has Russia decided to abrogate it? Russian President Vladimir Putin signed a decree on Monday officially denouncing Russia's participation in the CFE Treaty. The Kremlin assured that the move, which comes more than 16 years after Russia first suspended its participation in the treaty, would have no direct consequences for Moscow because the CFE had already been turned into a corpse of agreement and not because of the fault of Russia. What was the CFE Treaty's purpose? Signed in Paris in November 1990 by 16 NATO and 6 Warsaw Pact countries, the Treaty on Conventional Armed Forces in Europe was designed to set quantitative limits on the five basic types of conventional weapons, tanks, armored combat vehicles, artillery, attack helicopters, and combat aircraft. The treaty was signed to help further limit tensions between NATO and the Warsaw Pact amid warming ties between Moscow and Washington under Mikhail Gorbachev. By the time the treaty stepped into force in November 1992, the Warsaw Pact had disbanded, the Soviet Union collapsed, and NATO's reason for being protecting the world from Soviet communism disappeared. Nevertheless, Russia and seven other former Soviet republics, including Belarus, Ukraine, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Georgia, Kazakhstan, and Moldova ratified the agreement. 
What are the terms of the CFE treaty? The CFE treaty's provisions allowed NATO and the Warsaw Pact members to maintain equal numbers of conventional weapons systems in a geographic area stretching from the Atlantic coast in the west to the Euro Mountains in the east. This included maximums for each block of 40,000 main battle tanks, 60,000 armored combat vehicles, 40,000 pieces of artillery, 13,600 combat aircraft, and 4,000 attack helicopters. The agreement also had further restrictions on forces outside the treaty zone and set limits on the number of active units among these forces, plus limits on the number of tank bridge layers, training aircraft, and transport helicopters Bloc countries could deploy. With the Eastern Bloc's dissolution and the sell-off and scrapping of thousands of pieces of military equipment by the CFE Treaty members through the 1990s and much of the 2000s, these numerical restrictions seemingly became a moot point. The word moot, pardon me. means open the question debatable disputed however the expansion of NATO and the alliances growing hostility towards common security initiatives proposed by Moscow would soon prove an irreconcilable bone of contention and here they provide a graph NATO slide show presentation showing quantitative disparities between NATO and Warsaw Pact forces by types of military equipment. These figures have shifted dramatically in the Western Alliance's favor after the end of the Cold War. Blue for NATO, red for the Warsaw Pact. We can see that these things shifted dramatically in the favor of NATO indeed. Now NATO has a lot more uh, helicopters and whatnot, according to the graph. But Russia is still known for possessing the most uh, nuclear uh, capable warheads to date, including the Satan II uh, ICBMs. Why did Russia suspend its participation in the CFE? In July 2007, Moscow suspended the implementation of the CFE treaty citing NATO's failure to ratify a 1999 adaptation of the agreement, which proposed a system of national and territorial limits in place of block-based limitations and other measures to build trust and reduce tensions. The treaty signed at the time of the Cold War has ceased to correspond to modern European realities and to meet our security interests, the Russian former ministry said at the time in a statement explaining Moscow's move. Furthermore, NATO members have taken a number of steps that are incompatible with the spirit and the letter of the treaty, the ministry added. President Putin protested that instead of proceeding with the reduction of armaments by deeds, not words, NATO had decided to engage in a new buildup of armaments in Europe, and that is true. Hence the reason why we have the current conflict as I speak in Europe. Russia indefinitely halted participation in the CFE in 2015, accusing NATO of bypassing its provisions through the expansion of the bloc. Russia's concern with NATO has always been its expansion around, near, upon its borders. After withdrawing from the CFE, the Russian foreign ministry signaled Readiness for talks and a new agreement on conventional arms in Europe. Now, Scripper says, for when they shall say peace and safety, and then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape, according to First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. So even though they may put up a front of a so-called peace, there will not be any peace, because we are in a season of war, according to Ecclesiastes the third chapter, the eighth verse. Hence the reason why 
the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahushua has been putting it upon these different nations to prepare for war. Again, this is the book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. The Gentiles are the heathen nations. Prepare war. For what war? According to Revelation, the 11th chapter, the 14th verse, the third war is woe, which cometh quickly. A war that will be fought, according to the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 5, with burning and fuel of fire. Wake up the mighty men. All the men of war let all the men of war draw near draw near where to the valley of jehoshaphat which is located in the arabian peninsula okay in the middle east the word jehoshaphat in the hebrew is yahweh shapat which means yahweh's judgment and so the nations the mighty men of war will draw near to the valley of jehoshaphat located in the middle east let them come up Beat your plowshares, and that's why the Lord has been drying up the river Euphrates, according to the book of prophecy. You can refer to that in Revelation, the 16th chapter, so that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords, and your pruner hooks into spears. Plowshares and swords are instruments of cruelty. However, pruner hooks and spears, okay, excuse me, I'm sorry, plowshares and pruner hooks, I'm sorry represents instrument of agriculture as they are swords and spears is what i meant to say uh, represents instruments of cruelty and so these nations are taking their economic wealth which is the plowshares and the pruner hooks and beating them taking them and using them to create enhance and modify weapons of mass destruction, especially ICBM nuclear missiles, which are the swords and spears. Okay? Let the weak say, and weak nations such as North Korea, okay, Iran, are now saying that they are strong. I am strong because now they possess nuclear capabilities. Okay? So, that's one of the reasons why we've been seeing these different nations breaking away from these different treaties, including Russia. Okay, so again, this is Joel chapter 3, verse 10. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruner hooks into spears. But the weak say, I am strong. And so these nations, again, are taking their economic wealth and using them towards the research, development, and enhancements of weapons of mass destruction, primarily ICBM nuclear missiles, which, according to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 25, are the weapons of the Lord's indignation. Right, so now let's read on. It says, After withdrawing from the CFE, the Russian Foreign Ministry signaled readiness for talks on a new agreement in conventional arms in Europe. NATO ignored the proposal, but in 2016, amid rising tensions over the Ukrainian crisis, the Foreign Ministry of 14 European states, including Germany, France and Italy proposed the relaunch of conventional arms control with Russia to ensure effective cooperative security allowing for peace and stability on our continent. The proposal ultimately came to naught with a distrustful Moscow complaining about NATO's posture of cohesive containment of Russia and the rebalancing of power in the region in the alliance's favor. Washington, meanwhile, accused Russia of violating core principles of international law, signaling refusal to entertain a new conventional arms control agreement. The CFE Treaty is the latest Cold War agreement to be scrapped amid rising Russia NATO tensions. Earlier this year, President Putin suspended Russia's participation in the new strategic arms reduction treaty, New START, which is now the last major strategic arms treaty between the nuclear superpowers after the U.S.'s unilateral withdrawal from the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty in 2019 under then President Donald Trump. Okay, Nero, in the 2020, the U.S. pulled out of the treaty in open skies. 1992 agreement which allowed party states 
to conduct pre-agreed upon aerial surveillances, surveillance, excuse me, flights to build trust with the first inking or inklings, excuse me, of the collapse of the post-1991 security order can be traced back in 2002 when Washington scrapped the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty, which restricted the number and types of anti-missile defense systems the nuclear superpowers could create and field. This decision prompted Moscow to dust off Soviet-era research into hypersonic missiles, with Moscow subsequently successfully fielding several hypersonic weapons capable of defeating any existing or prospective missile defenses, thus managing to preserve the global strategic balance. And this concludes the article. And I will end the lesson here. Lord's willing, it has been edifying and informative. Until next, this has been another in the news. Shalom to the elect.